And are you refreshed? Yes. Good. Now what? You know, when you have a clear desire and you're somewhere in the vicinity of it, you light up in a, I want this and I'm ready for this way. There's a lot of that going on here. <laughs> I'm super excited. <laughs> I have played this in my mind so many times. And the lady in front of me told me, write your question because you're, you're going to get it. So write your question. She got your spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't, because um, of course I didn't. Um, because I thought, like, I know the question is just going to come to me. I'm just going to be there, and I think about it, and the question is going to come to me. Uh oh. It's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was the whole point of this? Of coming here? Um, coming to this chair? Um, I am so grateful that I met you. Like, obviously, you changed my life. Um, because you articulated everything that I couldn't articulate. Things you already knew. Yes. Right. And um, gave me so much like light and stuff. And I, I went into this whole thing of like um, doing channeling readings and all that. And it seems that I'm like at that level that I can be like stable with my life. Like I can look at something that's happening and say, okay, what's, what is the reason this is happening? Like all that, like what is the lesson behind it? What is the pattern within me that's creating this, that's attracting this? Like there's only attraction, there's only the attraction. Like what, what, why is this bringing this? Like it's helpful to notice that there is a pattern. There's never a lesson. No one's trying to teach you a lesson. That's good. <laughs> it's just you teaching yourself the lesson. I don't like this or I do like this, but there's no one who's decided that there is something that you ought to be doing or something that you didn't get right. And so we'll teach you a lesson. There's nothing like that going on. You're not getting that from source. You're getting that from your mother. <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm in that place, right? Cool. And it seems to me that now I'm going to like keep going, right? I'm, I'm going at 50. I, I, I'm good at the 50, but I want to go now at the 90s, you know, 100. And look at it this way. When you are in a state of non-resistance, you feel good, which means you're allowing into your experience. A feeling of satisfaction is really a nice feeling. A feeling of eagerness is a really nice feeling too. It's a different feeling. A feeling of passion, that off the wall enthusiasm, that's a nice feeling too. But you're not wanting to go 100 miles an hour all the time. In fact, sometimes it's nice to be able to mold your speed, to mold your energy, because let's say you're going really fast and then you come across a resistant thought about the subject. A car that's going 100 miles an hour and hits a tree doesn't feel so good. A car that's going five miles an hour and hits a tree is not such a big thing. So your process is to figure things out because, you know, we really want you to hear this. There is always, 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 always going to be something in your life experience that causes you to ask for more. So there is always going to be a gap between what you've just asked for and your readiness for it. We want you to manage that gap by acknowledging, first of all, it's supposed to be there. Next of all, that nothing's going wrong. Next of all, that things are always working out so that you can stand in that place, that pleasurable place of enjoying watching things fall into place. You forget that you are creators. A sculptor wants to mold the clay. You wouldn't just take your clay and slap it down and say, well, it didn't turn out like I expected, but there you are. <laughs> You want to spend time with it. And that's the way life is with you. You have a new experience, which gives you a new request. And that new request now has given your vortex a new segment. The new request that you just threw in affected everything else that was already there. And now everything is finding cooperation with everything else. Do you see what we're getting at? It's just a constant state of evolution and becoming. And so you don't need to be eager to get somewhere. What we want you to be is satisfied where you are, because if you will focus on being satisfied with what is, 
the eagerness for more will come naturally it will come so easily and you won't have those highs and lows that roller coaster life that so many people have when they want something and then they get it and then they go into depression because they're not ready for the next and the next does that make sense to you yes what happens to me is that I want something and I get it and I get bored like and then I want something else but this is why we were emphasizing earlier you want it for the feeling of it and once you calibrate to that feeling of why you want it now there's just another and another and another that's the distinction we were making with our friend earlier that when you're looking for a specific goal then what you just described can happen you want it you're looking forward to this trip you plan for it you go on the trip and now it's over and now you're in a funk that's the difference between what we were talking about about the subject being the trip and the subject being the happily ever after life that I'm living because you're always on a trip you're always around a lot of people there is always so much potential for collaboration and consideration and rendezvousing you see what we're getting at yes totally so that will sort of steady that because if you have those feelings of exhilaration and then that feeling of being bored that's not that steady state of allowing that we're talking about and it also indicates that there's a little bit of conditional response in other words the trip or whatever it is you created was your reason for happiness and now you need something else to replace it where if you let your intention be to focus upon finding that feeling and not needing the condition to support it most people live a very conditional love they don't love just because it's natural to love they love because there's somebody to love and somebody that's loving them back and it feels good when somebody holds you as their object of attention and they're loving you oh it feels so good but now you need their undivided attention they better not go have dinner somewhere or go to work you need their undivided attention because they are the reason that you feel the way you do that's not what you're looking for you're wanting to connect with who you are so that where you are looking feels good to you all the time and then there isn't the high and the low and the high and the low it's just that steady feeling of well-being that is constantly expressing itself in another way and in another way and in another way Esther was texting a friend as she was waiting at the airport in San Diego and her friend said where are you going and Esther said Dallas and then she wrote yee-haw <laughs> just for fun she's never done that in her life she doesn't even know what came over her it's not something that she has ever said it just happened so now it was a direct flight and the plane landed it was southwest plane landed and a very funny Esther had been enjoying him the whole flight flight attendant who was making the majority of the announcement said welcome to Dallas welcome to Love Field home of Southwest Airlines and the passenger across the way said yee-haw <laughs> and Esther thought all right this is the universe playing with me it's like they know in advance that that guy's gonna do that so they set me up for that they set me up for that and it was way funny everyone laughed but especially Esther she really really liked that now you may not find that very significant but when you're in on the setup and then the universe delivers you feel really really cared for yeah yeah, yeah. thank you so much Enough? yeah <laughs>